Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 85 and 86. Problem number 85 and 86 in these two problems, these are basically essentially, these two problems are essentially one and the same. In the first one, we'll learn how to convert the speed that is given to us in meters per second into the equivalent speed in kilometers per hour. And in the second pro and in the next problem, we'll do the exact same problem, except we'll use the English system where the speed will be given to us in feet per second, and we'll figure out what that translates into miles per hour. All right, let's get going. So we have a train, we are told, that travels at the speed of x meters per second per second how many kilometers can it go in t hours how many kilometers can it go in t hours? Now, that t is just a multiplier. If that t happens to be 1, if the value of the t happens to be 1, then what this boils down to is how many kilometers can it go in 1 hour, which is same as asking what is this speed translates into kilometers per hour. But if it's given to us how are many kilometers that is given that are given here, if, it, if you're told that this, it goes this many kilometers in 2 hours, then of course the very first thing we would do is convert, divide this, this amount by 2 and we'll have the, again the kilometers per hour. So essentially what we're doing here is learning how to translate the speed that is given to us in meters per second into kilometers per hour or kilometers into given number of hours. Let's get going. So let's start with what we know. What we know here is that it goes x meters goes x meters per second. Now the problem in this setup is that we are interested in how many kilometers. We're looking for distance. It's always a good idea to leave the unknown quantity, how many kilometers, leave the unknown quantity on the right hand side as opposed to solving an equation. When we're solving an algebraic equation we like to have the unknowns on the left hand side. But in the word problem it's good to have this on the right hand side because we can, we can have more room to work. It's just a matter of convenience, it's, that's all it is. It's not a matter of right or matter of being right or wrong. It's just more convenient to have it on the on the right hand side. So let's let's transpose this thing. We know it goes x meters per second, which is same as saying, which is same as saying that it takes one second for x meters. So far so good. Now we're going to convert our seconds into hours and meters into kilometers. That's all it is. How many seconds in how many seconds in an hour? An hour has 60 minutes and each minute has 60 seconds. So 60 times 60 or 3600 seconds make up an hour. So if it, if it takes one second for, if in one second, in one second it goes x meters, let's put it like that, in one second, in one second it goes x meters. Well, if in one second, if in one second it goes x meters, then in 2 seconds it will go 2 times as much, in 5 seconds it will go 5 times as much, and that implies that in 3600 seconds it should go, it should go 3600 times x meters. But we are not interested in meters, we want kilometers. So if we divide this thousand by 1000, because there are 1000 meters in the kilometers, if we divide this quantity by 1000, we can convert our meters into kilometers. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to convert this into kilometers by dividing the quantity by a thousand. And that's it. We're done. This is how many in one hour. So this in, in three in three thousand six hundred seconds, which is saying, which is same as saying that in one hour it goes this many meters. Let's reduce this thing. Let's simplify this thing. Thirty six hundred over one thousand. If you divide top and bottom by hundred, the two zeros drop out, and then divide top and bottom by two. 3 has, 3 has 1, 2, the remaining one goes and joins a 6, becomes 16, and 16 has 8, 2, and this will become 5. 
So it's 18 over 5. This boils down to 18 over 5 times x. It boils down to 18 over 5 times x kilometers. That's how much it goes in one hour. In one hour. In, in 3600 seconds, which is saying, which is the same as saying in one hour. We're not going for one hour, we're going for two hours. So if in one hour, if it goes this much distance, in two hours it will go twice as much, in five hours it will go five times as much, and in t hours it will go t times as much. That's all it is. So that in terms implies that if in one hour it goes this much distance, then in t hours it should go 18 over 5 times x times t kilometers. That's it. A train travels x meters per second. How many kilometers will it go in t hours? The answer is it will go this many kilometers. At the very end, what we need to do here is to make sure that our answer that we arrived at, 18 over 5 times xt, is in fact the correct answer. And how do we do that? We do it exactly the way we always have done, which is by, plug which is by plugging in numbers for the variables. And we solve this problem arithmetically. We get our answers arithmetically. We get our answers to our arithmetic problem. And we make sure that the answer this, that, that this thing gives us is the same answer. Let's do that, shall we? Enough of the talk. So how fast do you want to go? How fast do you want to go? Let's let's go let's go 100 100 meters. Let's go 100 meters per second, and let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to do it very quickly. 100 meters in one second. One second for 100 meters. This is for meters, which implies that 3,600 3, second. In 3,600 seconds, we should be able to go 3,600 times 100 meters. We're not interested in meters, we want kilometers. So let's divide this thing by 1,000. We convert this into kilometers, this 1,000. Very straightforward. Let's divide top and by, the bottom by 100. That 100 goes away. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. This thing goes away. And we end up with three, 360, 360 kilometers. 360 kilometers. Now, that's, that's for one hour. This is for 3,600 seconds, which is same as, which is same as one hour. Now we have to decide how many hours you want to go, which really doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it's just going to be a multiple. So in one hour, we can go this many kilometers. If you were to plug in, let's say, 3 for t, then instead of one hour, it will be three hours, it will be three times as much. That's all it is. So this, this three that you see there, that's your t right here. That's your t. Essentially, what we have to establish is that 18 over 5 times x boils down to 360. If 18 over 5 times x is 360, then that answer is correct. Let's find out, shall we? 18 over 5. 18 over 5 times x. And what was our x? 100. 100. Watch what happens. We get a 5 at the bottom, we get a 100 at the top. Let's divide top and bottom by 5, and the 100 will become 20. 100 will become 20, so we have 18 times 20, which is same as 2 times 10, and 18 times 2 is, 18 times 2 is 3, 18, ti 18 times 2 is 36. 36 times 10 is 360. So that is the right answer. 18 over 5 times x times t. What this tells us is that, what this tells us is that if we have a speed that is expressed in meters per second, meters per second, and if we are asked to convert that speed into kilometers per hour, per hour means that the t would be 1 here. If you're talking about per hour, t would be 1. And this t actually, or this t, will cease to play any role because it will be just one. It will be just per hour. In which case, if you have to convert your speed from meters per second to kilometers per hour, the quick, the fast, the most efficient way is to simply take this ratio of 18 divided by 5 and multiply it by however many meters you're going in a second. So they tell you that you're going 20, 20 meters per second, you simply take 18 over 5 times 20 and that will give you kilometers per hour. If you're going 450 meters per second, just multiply this quantity by 450 and you will have your speed 
equivalent speed in kilometers per hour from meters per second. Do you understand? Now we're going to do the exact same problem, but we're going to convert our speed from feet per second into miles per hour, the English system. So let's do that. So again, we have a train that is traveling at a speed of f feet per second. And the question is, how many miles, how many miles can it go in t hours? So it will be the same process, same process, but with different system, the English system. The calculation will be different. So we start out again what, with what we know. We know that we are going 8 feet per second, which is same as saying that it takes, in one second, in one second we can go, in one second it goes f feet, f feet. Now in the exam they will tell you, in the exam they will tell you how many feet there are in a mile, so don't worry about that, they will tell you that. So in one second it goes f feet, that implies that, that implies that in 3600 seconds it should go 3600 times f feet, because f is the feet here. And if, you, if there is a chance that that f will confuse you with the feet, you can use a different symbol because sometimes we don't want to take a chance of making the two things to how many feet should we say per second? Uh, make up a variable here. How about s feet per second, s for the speed? s and f it sounds, I'm making too much first. Let's do the same as before, x feet per second. Okay? Now, that's how many, so that implies that in one hour, in one hour, it goes 3600 times x feet. We want to convert, we want to convert this, this amount from feet to miles. We know that there are, we know that there are three feet, make up one yard, and we know that 1760 yard, make up a mile make up a mile. So 3 times 1760 feet is what we have in, in, in miles. 3 times 1760 feet is what we have in mile. The feet are going to cancel out and the, we'll end up the mile on the top. So now we have to figure out what this quantity is and that's in one hour. That's in one hour which means in two hours which means in two hours it will be twice as much. In five hours, in five hours, it'll be five times as much. We're not going one hour, two hours, or five hours, we are going t hours. So in t hours, it'll be t times as much. But we just have to remember that thing at the end, it's just whatever the whatever hours that we have here, that's how many multiple it is going to be. We simply have to simplify this quantity, 3600 divided by 3 times 1760. Don't forget the x also here. So it's same as before, x times t, that's going to remain there, x times t. Let's find out what this quantity here is, 3600, that we see on the top, over 3 times 1760. I'm going to write 1760 as 176 times 10, and we're going to write 3600 as 36 times 100. It will make our calculation, it will make our simplification a little bit easier. Well, we see, we see 36 on the top, we see 3 at the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 has 1, 3, 6 has 2, 3, so that's 12. And that takes care of that 3, there is a 10 that, that goes away. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. How do we know that this number is divisible by 4? Because the last two digits are 76. We learned in our basic math series, from day 1 through 100, we learned the divisibility, divisibility rules. In those divisibility rules, we learned that a number is divisible by 4 if the last two digits of the number are divisible by 4. The last two digits of 176 is 76, and 76 is divisible by 4. And how do we know that 76 is divisible by 4? Because 76 is simply 4 less than 80. And 80, of course, is divisible by 4. 80 is just 40 plus 40. Since 80 is divisible by 4 and 76 is exactly 4 less than 80, 76 must also be divisible by 4. So let's divide top and bottom by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. How many 4s does 1 have? 
How many 4 does 1 have? 1 has no 4s. That 1 is going to go and join the 7 becomes 17. How many 4 does 17 have? 17 has 4 4s. The remaining 1 from the 17 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16 one more time and 16 has 4 4s. So that takes care of that. We see a 10 in the top, we see 44 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 2. 10 will become 5 and 44 will become 2. And that's all we can do here. There's nothing else we can do. So the final answer is 3 times 5 over 22. 3 times 5 over 22, which is same as 15 divided by 22. 15 divided by 22. Now don't forget we have an x here and we have a t here. So it's going to be, it's going to be this amount times x times t times x times t. So this is times x times t. That's it. That's our answer. 15 over 22 times x times t. So if t happens to be 1, since this just, just like before, if they give you the miles in one hour, if, they, if the question is, if it's going x feet per second, what is what does this translate into miles per hour? Miles per one hour. If t happens to be 1, that t plays no role. All we have to do is in order for us to convert the speed from feet per second to miles per hour, all we have to do is take this ratio of 15 over 22 and multiply, multiply it by however many feet we are going in a second. So if they tell you that we are going 25 feet per second, what does that translate into miles per hour? Well, that's just 15 times 25 over 22. How, how fast, how fast is, what is the speed? What does it translate into, what does it translate into speed in terms of miles per hour if you're going at the speed of 15 if you're going at the speed of 22 feet per second well if you're going 22 feet per second we in place of x here we put 22 here 22 feet per second how fast are you going in one mile what is your speed per hour we replace in, in place of x in place of x we replace 22 and it's 15 times 22 over 22, 22 is going to cancel out and we're going to left with 15. In other words, a speed of 22 feet per second, a speed of 22 feet per second translates into 15 miles per hour. That's your quick formula there. We need to verify this answer. We are taking too long. Let's verify this answer very quickly. Same as before, we're going to pretend that our speed is 100 feet per second. Same as before, okay? We're going to pretend that we are going 100 feet per second. We need a lot of room, so I'm going to erase all of this work so that we can figure out that this answer is correct. If you're going 100 feet per second, 100 feet per second, that translates into 100 times 3600 feet per hour. And if you happen to go for 3 hours, be 3. So that's not going to play part. Well, if, if t happens to be 3, this will be 3 here and this time will be 3. Essentially, we have to confirm that this many feet, once we convert into mile, is 15 over 22 times the speed here. So if you divide this by this amount, 3600 over 3 times 1760, now instead of feet, we have miles. Miles per hour. We need to simplify this quantity. We need to simplify this quantity and show that this quantity and down this hundred, which which what hundred is? This one hundred that you see here, this one hundred that we see here is your x right here. That's your x right there. So essentially, we have to show that fifteen over twenty-two is what this quantity boils down to. This right here. We have to show that thirty-six hundred divided by three times seventeen sixty is equal to fifteen over twenty-two. And if we can show that then we have shown that this answer is correct. So let's do the right here. 3600 over 3 times 1760. Again, instead of writing 3600, I'm going to write that as 36 times 100 because I prefer it that way. Makes it easier. And it better, boils, it better boils down to 15 over 22. So let's divide top and bottom by 3. We get 12. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. 17 has 4 4. So the remaining one goes and joins the 6. 6 becomes 16. And 16 has 4 4. And 12 will become 3. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 100 will become 50. And 
44 will become 22. And we get, ah, and I left out, you see in my haste, I wasn't paying attention, there is a zero there. I left a zero out. I left a zero out, which is what's causing the problem. Which is what's causing the problem. And now we divide top and bottom by 10. You have to pay attention. You see, I wasn't paying attention. Which is why, which is precisely why I separated the zero from the very beginning, right here. 176, 176 times 10, I wrote it down there. So that we don't leave the zero behind. Let's divide top and bottom by 10, and that zero is going to go away. We end up with 3 times 5, which is 15, over 22. And like I said, whatever the t happens to be, if that t happens to be 3, that will be, will be 3 will appear here, and this, will be, this quantity also would have been 3 times as much. Bye now.